Say hi there, this is Charlene Burke with Grow Because You Know. That's www.growbecauseyouknow.com. Welcome to Morning Mindset Cafe. Today we're talking about Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. More specifically, talking about leadership attributes and why they fail. Who's they? Why the failure? They being me, being you, for struggling to step into leadership roles if we are being asked to be a leader, if we are on a road of personal development, and like me, never really considered myself a leader, but now it's happening or it has been happening for quite a while and getting comfortable with that. See, I could, I could cause my own success or failure in leadership. So out of the book, Think and Grow Rich, in chapter seven, in the PDF, more specifically, that I'm working from and that you are in the room are welcome to download. Let me review quickly the major attributes of leadership, and then we'll take a look at the 10 major causes of failure in leadership and have a discussion about that. So here are some important factors of leadership. Unwavering courage. How's that? Unwavering courage based upon knowledge of self and one's occupation. No follower wants to be dominated by a leader who lacks self-confidence. So that unwavering courage brings in self-confidence. Self-control. The person who can't control themselves can never control others. Self-control sets a great example for followers. And those who are intelligent, <laughs> this is what it says, the more intelligent will emulate that self-control. So we have unwavering courage, self-control. Number three is a keen sense of justice. It's a sense of fairness and justice without which no leader can command and retain the respect of his followers. We have definiteness of decision. Definiteness of decision. Definiteness of plans. The successful leader must plan his work and work the plan. No guesswork involved here. The habit of doing more than paid for. Also stated here that one of the penalties of leadership is the necessity of willingness on the part of the leader to do more than they are requiring of their followers. A pleasing personality. Leadership calls for respect. Let's see, then we have sympathy and understanding. The successful leader must be in sympathy with the followers. He must understand them and their problems. Mastery of detail. Successful leadership calls for mastery of details in the leader's position. Willingness to assume full responsibility. The successful leader must be willing to assume responsibility for the mistakes and shortcomings of their followers. And cooperation. The successful leader must understand and apply the principle of cooperative effort to be able to induce the followers to do the same. Leadership calls for power, power calls for cooperation. And there are two types of leaders, aren't there? Two forms of leadership. The first, which is the most effective, is leadership by consent of and with sympathy for the followers. The second is leadership by force. And that, of course, is without consent or sympathy of the followers. Leadership by force simply can't endure. At the big level that we're talking about dictators and royalty, kingships and um, serfdoms and kingdoms and all of that. In the corporate or business level, we're talking about managers and, and uh, leadership that's been appointed by somebody but not agreed to by the followers. You're forced to have that manager, good, bad, or indifferent, right? So let's start there. Those are the attributes of a leader or of leadership. 
Catherine saying a leader has a vision and conviction that a dream can be achieved. He inspires the powers and energies to get it done. Ralph Lauren. Yes. That's that's a good summation. Some of these attributes, right, are, um, and of course, the failures are that which don't utilize these attributes. I like the unwavering courage. I am so unwavering courage and self-control. Those are the first things that really attract me to a leader. Someone who has the courage of their convictions. Someone who has solid belief in the vision that they've set. Someone who won't be swayed, right? Some that they um, they believe in what they're doing. It's unwavering courage, and it's based on self knowledge. It's based on assurance within their skills, their own talents, their ability to see it in others. But then the big one for me when I see it is self-control. You know, the leader that loses it isn't a leader anymore, right? At least in my eyes. I don't think a leader has automatic respect. I think the leader needs to earn respect by other behavior and words and giving respect. Yes. Yes, and that's part of the attributes of leadership. That keen sense of justice, right? That is what can help with gaining respect. Because there's a, a level of fairness that the leader presents. But also, honestly, it's much easier to respect somebody who's willing to take full responsibility of the situation. Things going south, all right. We're not going to be pointing fingers and doing the blame game enough. Let's get into the solution. Let's take care of things. Let's get something done. Um, let's, uh, let's move forward. So I think a leader, although it's not listed as such, I think a leader is solution-oriented as well. And Matt's saying leaders can help create other leaders too. That is so interesting because... Um, if you're willing to, Matt, I'd like to have you come in and talk about that. What does that look like? What does that look like for a leader to help create another leader? Love to have you come in and talk about that. And he's saying to himself, I haven't finished my cereal yet. I haven't finished my breakfast. Um... I find that pleasing personality interesting because that can be an attractive initial, but um, got to have it to keep the follower, keep them liking you. Hi, Matt. Hi. I got up early today. <laughs> you did. And you're bright and cheery. I love that. Love that. Good to see you. Yeah. So I, I would love to hear what you say that it looks like for leaders helping to create other leaders. Well, I've, I've thought about like the positions I've held and in clubs and when I did FCCLA for a while, and it really was like having a successor for what you're doing. You have like, I, I, I noticed it's not always everybody that wants the same position for a reason, but you have that one person that's willing to take responsibility as much as you are. And then when I leave that position, that person fills it and you can tell that they really care enough to to do what I so, do. Like purposeful mentorship then? Yeah. A purposeful, I'm selecting, I see somebody who would do well in the position I'm in, which is a higher position than they've been in. And, and I can start. Always somebody I choose to. Sometimes it's a person that's willing to take responsibility like I do. So when that happens, then is it still purposeful mentorship? Are you getting guidance from somebody else? Or is it um, the person who's stepping up is just emulating who they see. I think I think it's the second point. I think it's a person that that cares enough to want to make the change I'm making, mm -hmm. and that wants to be at the forefront of that. So, are you saying then that they're a follower, and that they are stepping up? Is that a possibility well, as well? Maybe they begin as a follower, 
mm-hmm. and then and they want to emulate that responsibility and take that responsibility. So, like when I was in, just a simple example, when I was in book club and I had to arrange all the meetings and and choose the books, and I brought like the snacks and cookies and everything. Right. There were a couple members that were always at like the forefront of like, okay, what's book club doing next week? Like they were always taking initiative and wanting to contribute. Mm-hmm. And I think those early signs are people that want to that want to be at the forefront of the change that's happening. Like they're not that okay. person like asking when the next book club meeting is. They're the person that, that goes, okay, let's plan it. Like, let's do it. Well, they're not the person waiting for the email, right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> they're not, well, you'll send me the email with the link. Yeah. You'll send me the email with the link. You know, I'll leave all the work like, to you. Like, it's I think it's part of it's an initiative and I think well, it's important to plant those seeds early on or notice the people that want to. That's what I, that's what's striking me as you're saying to, uh, first off, there's going to be followers that are so fully on board with what you're doing that they will willingly give up their time and energy to help mm-hmm. make it happen. And you saying that is one of the attributes of the leader, isn't it, is to notice that. Exactly. So noticing that and welcoming in them in as part of the leadership team without thinking of it as a leadership team, but instead saying, so glad you want to be a part of this. If you're up for it, here's the task that needs to be done and helping them to step up. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that could be an excellent beginning to having somebody take over. But I'm taking it a step further, thinking that um, I just had just did an interview with a gal who's, um, and we'll probably never see it, she's uh, in Holland, but um, she um, she was questioning me on, on a lot of that, how do I do these things that I do, especially when it comes to mastermind groups. And people are more and more asking me, how do you do that? How, I'm hearing good things, you know, and, and mm-hmm. Um, so recognizing that there's some people out there that want to do it, but that are ste- and are stepping up, but now it becomes a formal relationship of mentoring where you're getting the guidance because there's more behind the scenes of having something, um, go off without a hitch, mm-hmm. like your book club, right? Then, um, people can see on the front end, I think that's where I'm going with it. So if I pay attention, or like you, you pay attention to those that are stepping up and participating and making sure things happen, you can start telling them more about what it takes to mm-hmm. keep this going and seek a volunteer through there to take over. You could do that and start grooming them in the traits and um, skills that are needed in order to carry it off. Right. And those are the people to to spend time and invest in. Like there are some people that I just read a, a blog post by Seth Goad and he talks about it's hardly productive to ruin your day and, and your work trying to teach folks a lesson that sort of don't want to <laughs> listen and invest in it. You can spend yeah, they don't day and they don't want to learn. So if you can like really pay attention and notice the people that do want to invest, uh, those are the people to... Um, those are the got to get in. And get into a mentorship with his, his blog post. It's really short. It's like two paragraphs. It's called the toddler strategy. Uh, sometimes it's better to treat people that are disagreeable like a toddler. Buy them a lollipop smile and walk away. <laughs> but, yeah, I've I've never called it the toddler, but I've just, you know. Yeah, well, isn't that interesting? And walk funny, away. Fun analogy. <laughs> well, in a corporate setting where it's highly structured, in a business setting, especially very large business, hence the corporate word. Um, Many leaders are picked on purpose from the group. So uh, a a VP or directorship isn't just advertised on the outside and you go through an interview process and, all right, some are, but most aren't. Um, and then suddenly you're hired in from the outside and you have to learn the culture and everything all over. More often than not, truly more often than not, it's somebody from the inside that has been noticed and has begun the grooming process. And so 
someone above will be selected to begin mentoring them mm -hmm. and on purpose. And they both know what the end result is um, hope to be, is that you will be groomed to the point where you can walk into this position to be the leader we need you to be. Mm -hmm. So it is regular meetings with a leader and reviewing and working with those skills and attributes and honing them and identifying personal development and what, a lot of coaching, I guess, that goes on. Mm -hmm. I always thought that was absolutely fascinating. I never, never experienced that in corporate setting. It wasn't something that um, I aspired to, but the further I'm away from that setting and I'm able to see how that structure can be so helpful mm -hmm. to developing leaders within a company, I'm seeing the value of what we're talking about here in action. I mean, I know people who are in those mentorships now that uh, they're being groomed for a VP position, for a directorship. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's it's a lot of time and energy that's put out by the leader. Wow. You know? So you have to have that willingness, like you said. <laughs> not everybody yeah. wants to be the leader. <laughs> yeah, and it's not an easy position. Like, I think about all the time how if you have like a specific, if you have distance from somebody in a leadership position, it's hard to imagine the reality and how much they're facing. And we think like they're sitting in their lounge chair, you know, they're the leader of the company, but, but <laughs> no, that's not how it works. And it's, no, it's, it's interesting <laughs> how people, people in companies yeah. have to think about their successors. They have to think about people that like later on, like who's going to do all this stuff, you know? I mean, well, and they do think about it. That's they why there's, yeah, they do. The bigger the company, the more leadership teams that are involved in departmental runnings and changes and what have you. It's not all like a direct line from yeah. frontline supervisor to the top. And that's why you have those varying levels of responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, an interesting thing was uh, discussed that. Uh, is somebody was was uh, whining about the pay at CEO level and somebody else was saying that until you actually understand what's involved with being a CEO of a billion dollar company, a billion dollar company, um, you really don't have anything to stand on. Nobody's going to listen to you. And the response was interesting because um, the response was, well, corporations run themselves. There's no reason for one single person to make this much money. Mm -hmm. And of course, could have gone into attack mode, but it didn't. What was really interesting was that there were enough of us in the discussion that we brought that out exactly what you said, Matt. You obviously don't have never owned a business and don't know corporate people at these levels. It's obvious because I can introduce you to people who are at VP directorship levels. They're never home in a billion dollar corporation. They're not home. The CEO has fiduciary responsibility for a billion dollar company. Every decision that CEO makes as the leader affects the entire corporation. He could bankrupt them overnight. Could do it overnight, um, no matter how many checks and balances are in there, and that has happened, right? So your comment is spot on of followers who are maybe reluctant followers, mm -hmm. but part of the issue they have by in, even in the reluctance is not understanding what the leadership person um, is bringing to the table. Yeah, and it's and not the hardship. It's, it's not just the hardship or the good stuff. It's the overall, what is that person bringing to the table as a leader and its effect on everything, whether it's a small group, big group, company, what have you. I think about that, like the, the biggest, I have to hop out in a minute, but the biggest thing I think about too is because like the company that I'm a part of, I just have, I'm in one department and, but it is have multiple, but has multiple departments and and even being like a leader in that position with all those different departments, you're right. Like the decisions that, that, that there's, that our boss makes can affect the whole culture of the organization. And that's a lot of like, it's a lot of pressure, like mentally on making those decisions. And that's why they need, they need um, that time to make those, 
those difficult it, it is but also isn't that the reason why we have these attributes you know that we've yeah. been talking about that's what helps the leader to be able to handle that level of stress and pressure because if you have um the mastery of detail if you have the willingness and ability to handle a full responsibility more importantly if you have the ability to wield power in the form of cooperation amongst your followers team members whatever you want to call them whatever words you want to use mm -hmm. um those are attributes that will maintain the leadership position so mm -hmm. And I, at this point, I'll just throw out there, based on a comment to the side, I don't care what language you use, leader, follower, tribe. I personally don't think that I am over a tribe. Because when somebody says tribe to me, I know Seth Godin loves the tribal. You know, <laughs> that is native. I'm not. Whatever word works. Whatever word works. <laughs> but, but it's language. And yeah. whatever language works for you and you want to associate those words with is fine. Um, Think and Grow Rich was written at a time that um, we still at least understand the language that's being used. Mm -hmm. I think it's important that we keep it as such and understand that in today's world with different, and, and even then, different views, everybody changed the words to suit themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just throwing it out there. I think I, <laughs> just me personally, I <laughs> Yeah, I can't help it. Whenever somebody talks about their tribe, I imagine that they're all sitting, half of them are sitting around the fire <laughs> on the bongos and the other half are doing a dance around them, right? In their grass skirts and and their tunics. You know, I just, I've, that's, I've, I've, it just doesn't resonate There's, with there's, me. Less, there's like strong ties and weak ties too. I like that, yeah. that idea. Like you have your people that you have your strong ties to and then you have like your weak ties, which are like, connections yeah, yeah. but not as not as close so there are a lot of yeah there are a lot of different words and i look at them as teams or yeah. groups teams groups and i've often referred to circles you know that that i have my inner circle which would be like a leadership team and then the circle comes out to a second level which is the initial group that we're leading and mm -hmm. then there's the the bigger circle which is those we're trying to attract to lead they're kind of interested in what we're doing but um not on board yet i like that so that's uh yeah. that's, it's just a better visual for me <laughs> it's all I in our head it. right <laughs> like, circles within circles within circles yeah yeah all right so i'll let somebody else somebody else okay hop dear. In. thanks Good for jumping day. in You're appreciate welcome. what you had to say yeah. Thank you. I'm always I'm always up for these. It's just so such a cool time we live right now, doing this, doing these things. It's so great. Oh, I'm glad you think so. Yes, good stuff. All right. Um, so you have a great day, dear. You have a great day. So Cindy, leaders don't know how to do everything. Oh, absolutely right. Hence, the ability to wield the power for cooperation, right, amongst those that they're leading, so that they can do. Um, their parts. Um, they need to know their strengths and acknowledge their weaknesses, not be afraid of others to do any pieces. Absolutely. And that is one of the, you know, the attributes. It's actually the 11th one, that cooperation. The successful leader must understand and apply the principle of cooperative effort. Leadership calls for power. Power calls for cooperation. And if you're going to have leadership by consent, then you really do have to understand cooperation. And that is even delegation of tasks are, when it comes down to that, are better served. The entire team, the entire project is better served when those who are part of it um, are there with consent. Right. So for the long term, these are excellent attributes for the leader to have. Oh, goodness. And it has to be about what works for you, no matter what they say about it. Yeah, the ever elusive they. <laughs> um, all right. So this is interesting. 
this is very interesting to me what I'm about to say next. And it's because remember the time frame that Think and Grow Rich was published, talking about 1930s. Okay, a little less than 100 years ago. I mean, literally, we're talking 80 some odd years ago. And Napoleon Hill is saying that history is filled with evidence that leadership by force cannot endure. The downfall and disappearance of dictators and kings is significant. It means that people will not follow forced leadership indefinitely. The world has just entered, 80 years ago, the world has just entered a new era of relationship between leaders and followers, which very clearly calls for new leaders and a new brand of leadership in business and industry. Those who belong to the old school of leadership by force must acquire an understanding of the new brand of leadership, which is that cooperation or be relegated to the rank and file of the followers. There's no other way for them. The relationship of employer and employee, leader or follower, in the future will be one of mutual cooperation based upon an equitable division of the profits of business. In the future, the relationship of employer-employee will be more like a partnership than it has been in the past. I'm going to throw out to you right now that that's what's been happening since the age of the internet. That individuals now are coming together as their own businesses, right? It's almost like I look at it as the, the cottage industries of old coming together as equals. We have huge corporations that are run on the concept of that cooperative effort. So you have your groups and teams within each level of the company that is working together with the leader. You recognize leader, somebody's going to take responsibility, make the decisions. Recognized followers, leader being the manager, follower being the employee, whatever you want to call it. But there are many companies out there that have been putting these to use. Now, I can recall one that I was a member of back in the 80s, job that I had, reasonably saw it was a relatively small company um, in today's dollars. It was about um, $40 million a year manufacturing company um, and had hundreds of employees. And yet, and yet. The, and still privately owned, the president and CEO of, well, president because it was privately owned, of the company um, had regular meetings with the entire employee base in smaller groups. And that would be the update, like a state of the company address and to answer questions from employees. And uh, that was um, done on a quarterly basis, if I remember correctly. And then once a month, there were departmental meetings. And leadership within those departments met and then went back to their team, the employees, and had small meetings with them to update them, but also to listen to their concerns and take those concerns above. And everybody was on board with this because everybody felt and believed that as an employee, they, they played an important integral part to the success of the company. In addition, after a particular amount of time of being an employee with your regular paycheck and raises and whatever benefits that came with all of that, you were provided an opportunity to own a portion of the business. That wasn't given to just any employee and every employee, but after a period of time, you were approached with that opportunity. And um, the, the package looked pretty much the same whether you were hourly salary or whatever. And it, it's, it was a beautiful company and it worked out wonderfully. And, and um, in the mid, the mid to late 80s was purchased and because the structure of the company was so attractive to the um, bigger company that purchased it. They wanted to keep that culture. And they've done very well. They've done very well. So this stuff works. And what I, what I, I know it works, and you guys know it works. But what's really interesting to me is that, you know, 80 years ago, Napoleon Hill was saying, you know what? You're just going to have to do things better, aren't you? 
this dictatorship stuff just isn't going to work for you. And he's saying that um, the new brand of leadership will embrace those 11 factors that were just described in addition to a few others. The person who makes this the basis of their leadership will find abundant opportunity to lead in any walk of life. At the end of the depression, which for those in the United States, that was in the 30s, the demand for leaders who are competent to apply the new methods of leadership has greatly exceeded the supply. That means that they were lacking leaders and look for those opportunities to step in. We can do the same today, can't we? Because we're seeing so many people stuck in an old way of thinking. Um, they're still there. Although there's more of us out here that are doing this differently, right? So what's uh, the causes of failure? What does it look like? What not to do? All right. So uh, number one is the inability to organize details. No genuine leader is ever too busy to do anything which may be required of him in his capacity as leader. When someone admits, be it as a leader or a follower, that they are too busy to change their plans or to give attention to any emergency, they're admitting to inefficiency. How's that? I think that's pretty straightforward. Unwillingness to render humble service. This goes to what was said earlier that leaders are servants, right? Isn't that what you said, Catherine? Great leaders are all about serving others. They're great um, they're great servants. Truly great leaders are willing, when occasion demands, to perform any sort of labor which they would ask someone else to perform. How, how, how quickly does your respect for somebody go up when you see them jump in to do the work you're doing and you, would, and you had originally thought that um, they, would, they would never do that and suddenly they're jumping in. My respect for you skyrockets. So yeah, I'm especially glad to know you know what you're talking about. You're proving it to me, right? By jumping in and, and doing some of the work. Um, expectation for pay for what they know instead of what they do with what they know. Fear of competition from those beneath them, their followers. Um, I want you to think about that for a second. Fear of competition in a small business like what I have could easily, and I see this in others who have businesses like mine, solo business owner, um, hesitating to bring somebody uh, somebody in, right? There's people that will hesitate to bring on board an online business manager or a virtual assistant. And it's because they're thinking, well, they're going to know everything that I'm doing and they're going to become a competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why they're an online business manager or virtual assistant, is so that they could learn everything about your business so they can do what you do. But hey, if that's a fear, then that's something that needs to be taken a look at because that's holding us back, right? And anything that holds us back, um, it needs to be looked at, taken care of, changed. Oh, lack of imagination. How creative does a leader get when an emergency happens? Who do you go to when you're part of a team and say panic mode? Hey, panic mode. A leader will step up and begin the pro the what ifs, right? They'll begin the, um, hey, you know, we got a problem. We need to, we need to solve it. Let's let's go for solutions. And a leader will come up with creative solutions. They step up. Uh, Catherine, instead of what they do with what they know, that was a great big ouch. Yeah, that's a big ouch. No, that's why I honestly, that's one of the reasons I, I didn't consider myself a leader. There was a time when I knew all sorts of things. I didn't, I didn't do anything with it, but I knew all sorts of things. And yet I was paid to for, for what I knew because I was a resource for people. But um, it's different today. I do things with what I know. 
And, uh, oh yeah, Cindy, isn't that the worst when you have somebody you're working with as a boss or a leader, and they don't have a clue what it is you do and yet tried to tell you how to do it? Yeah. It really says who the leader of the group is, no matter what the title, who people turn to for those creative solutions. Bingo. That's what was going through my mind. The leader steps up. It's not the manager, it's, it doesn't have to be the, the titled person or even the designated leader at that time, but a leader will step up and provide imaginative solutions. Well, actually a leader will step up, won't they? Ah, selfishness. Here's another way to fail at being a leader. Claiming all the honor of all the work that's been done. <laughs> and so this is what I'm envisioning. Just, what do you think would happen if I sat here and told you that 16 to success with whom I've been working with a couple of people, I've always mentioned their names before, but this has changed. Let's say 16 to success is about to launch next week. I am so proud of the work that we've, that I've done on it. I'm so proud of this final product that I'll be able to tell you about next week. It's awesome. You come in and you participate in it, and, and this is great. And all I'm talking about is all that I did and all that, uh, oh, trust me, the other leaders in the group, they'll, oh, I get bashed quickly. Resentment will happen quickly because it will sound like I'm taking credit for all the work that as a team we've done. I've done some things, but so have Christian and Aaron. Oh, yeah, not cool. Intemperance. Intemperate leaderships. You know, that lack of control. Go off the handle quickly, quick to anger, quick to blame. That'll destroy any level of leadership. Disloyalty. Oh, I agree with actually what's said in this phrase here in the book that perhaps this should have come at the at the head of the list being loyal to those above below and to the side <laughs> disloyalty marks one as being less than the dust of the earth and bring down brings down on one's head the contempt deserved lack of loyalty is one of the major causes of failure in every walk of life how strong is that Disloyalty, the leader who is not loyal to his associates, to those above him, those below him, cannot long maintain his leadership. Disloyalty marks one as being less than the dust of the earth. Do you guys agree with that? Disloyal. Less than the dust of the earth. What do you think of that one? If you're being disloyal or you see someone. Hi, Gina. Good to have you with us. Oh, I meant to say earlier, uh, a buddy or Charles? <laughs> Welcome. It's good to have you with us. Mm, less than the dust of the earth. That's pretty, that's pretty strong words about disloyalty. All right. So emphasis of the authority of leadership. Mm, now we're getting into more of a forced leader. Because the efficient leader leads by encouraging, not trying to instill fear. And if the leader is trying to impress the followers or the team or the employees with that authority that comes with the title. Now you're you now you're leading out of fear, and um, it's through force. It can get you by in the short term, but not for the long term. And that also coincides with emphasis of title. A competent leader requires no title to give him the respect of his followers. It's true. How true is that? The title doesn't matter. Either respect the person for who and what they're bringing to the table, to the effort, or you don't. You're willing to listen to what they have to say, follow the directions that they're giving, um, recommended or suggested or told. These are musts that you must do. Um, willingly follow that because it's out of respect. Isn't that a much better place to be? I think so, too. All right, so he's identifying where some of the uh, some of the new leadership will be required. Remember, this is 80 years ago, and I'm seeing this in light of today's world 
and economics. First, in the field of politics, there is an insistent demand for new leadership, a demand which indicates nothing less than an emergency. And he goes into a bit of detail of what was happening in politics then, which is very similar to what is happening in the U.S. Po political scene today. Second, the banking business is undergoing a reform. The leaders in this field have almost entirely lost the confidence of the public. Does that sound? Yeah, that's, that's what's happening to me, Catherine. This is freaky. This is freaky. It'd be nice if we learned from history. But here it is. I could easily be talking about right now. The banking business is undergoing a reform. The leaders have almost entirely lost the confidence of the public. Industry calls for new leaders. The old type of leaders thought and moved in terms of dividends instead of thinking and moving in terms of human, human equations. Exploitation of working men is a thing of the past. Let the man who aspires to leadership in the field of business, industry, and labor remember this. Then we have the religious leader of the future like now will be forced to give a more attention give more attention to the temporal needs of his followers in the solution of their economic and personal problems of the present less attention to the dead past and yet unborn future fifth in the profession of law medicine and education new leaders will become a necessity the leader in that field must find ways and means of teaching people how to apply the knowledge they receive in school Wow. And we've gone more and more in our education system to um, just learn it. Yeah, it's freaky. I know. Now, there's opportunities in all of these areas. So nothing's changed. Let's just say it that way. In terms of industry, in terms of the broad view, right? And yet still, as in, in the day of Napoleon Hill when he wrote this, there's opportunity now for we leaders to step in. And with the internet, holy moly, I'm telling you, it's actually better than that. It's only macaroni. We can do it. We can do it. And I say that especially on the um, application of knowledge because I'm not a teacher. I'm a trainer. I'm a wholehearted believer in let me train you how to actually do this. And we'll get the understanding as we do it. And then the new leaders will be required in the field of journalism. This one just, uh, it's indicative of today. New leaders will be required in the field of journalism. Newspapers of the future, not today, but of the future, to be conducted successfully must be divorced from special privilege and relieved from the subsidy of advertising. They must cease to be organs of propaganda for the interests which patronize their advertising columns. The type of new newspaper which publishes scandal and lewd pictures will eventually go the way of all forces which debauch the human mind. Again, while it was written 80 years ago, I, I'm one that believes, wow, it's not here today. So in the future, that's... That's definitely something to aspire to, and new leaders could definitely make those changes. And the world is on, it's quite simply straight from the book. These are but a few of the fields in which opportunities for new leaders and new brand of leadership are now available. The world is undergoing a rapid change. That's, and we're all a part of that. We know that to be true. This means that the media through which the changes in human habits are promoted must be adapted to the changes the media here described are the ones which, more than any others, determine the trend of civilization. So there we go. been talking about leadership. Can we step up to the role? Can we, as individuals, step into those leadership positions that can affect the kind of positive changes we want in the world, positive being that what we, which we see is going in the wrong direction, that we can help right it. Now, I'm going to be the first to tell you that in my mind, the world is too big. I am better suited to small groups and the ripple effect. 
and I've seen it in action and I've experienced it myself where I've trained others in, in the how to's of do something that involves concepts they're not familiar with. And over the years, I'm starting to see the changes in some people because they're taking what I've taught them, they're putting it into practice and they're teaching others by their by example. And you can start seeing the effects. It's not just me doing this. There's others doing things similar to me. And so we can start seeing those changes happen. Uh, yeah, well, Cindy, if we, we can go there. Personally, I think that our country is morally bankrupt because of what's happening with our, uh, with our news and what is considered to be news and what somebody else considers to be important for us to know, which is 95% uh, of the time totally controlled or affected by the types of advertisers that they have. As evidenced by, as evidenced by, some things won't be published in some areas because advertisers will walk away. They've done it. You can see it. You can look it up on the internet. You can see it. Advertisers walked away, nearly crippling news organizations. So, I agree with you. I don't know that it's gotten more sensational. I just think that we have access to more and we're bombarded with more because of the different media that we access ourselves, right? You've got your cell phone, you've got social media, multiple platforms to look there. You've got your local newspaper, your local news, you can do your television stations, you can do live broadcast, recorded, look it up on YouTube. I think it's that it seems like it's more because we're exposed to everybody else's news. I would, I too would like to move in the direction of Napoleon's prediction. Recommendations of the direction we should go. Which is why, honestly, Morning Mindset Cafe began with Think and Grow Rich so that I could learn a different way to think, of which I did. Then we went into Positive Mental Attitude, another Napoleon, Napoleon Hill book, which I believe is we will probably go through again after this one. And I'm involved with um, mastermind groups. And I'm involved with the creation of a product, 16 to Success, um, to teach people these principles, exactly what we are going through here, talking about, but actually learning them with eventual with workshops where you learn it, put it into action, get support, talk about it, right? This is this week what we're working on, learning them. And um, I'm more and more I'm being I'm attracting, right? I'm attracting people who have 20, 30, 40 years of living these principles, teaching them. And so uh, the hope is that I'll be offered or there will become an opportunity to collaborate with them to teach others and to get them on board. But that's the thing. That's why we teach and train. Hey, hi, Gina. I mean, we, if you don't know, you don't know. Don't know anything different. You just don't know. The minute you start asking questions, though, or recognize that you'd like to know, that's what we're here for. That's why I'm here. Um, I told you when I first started Morning Mindset Cafe, it was all about me because I wanted to know. I wanted to learn this. And I did. Now it's all about you. Those, If you show up, I'll be here. Stop showing up. There's no reason for me to be here anymore. Somebody else wants to learn this and I'll go elsewhere. Um, just so you know, that's why I'm glad you're still showing up. I like you guys. <laughs> but that's why I'm involved in the things that I'm doing. I want to be a part of continuing moving forward. And I know there's, there's plenty of us out here that want to. So I look for them and I team up with them and I, they become part of my circle. You know, and they are my circle of influence, not just my influence on them, but theirs on me. And it's positive and it's moving forward and it's learning, it's personal development and it's getting better while helping others to do the same. It's good stuff. 
Oh, you're still talking about the news. Yeah, Cindy, we, it's true. We, you know, we, it was very siloed. We only had the one or two news stations and, um, all right. So I grew up with three, ABC, NBC, and CBS. And every night there was a nightly news report, 30 minutes that gave us the headlines from around the world. And really they were the headlines that would affect us as U.S. citizens. Um, and then there was, um, uh, Let's see, one, like 60 minutes was an evening once a week. And then there was, a, I think there was a Sunday, Sunday news program when I was growing up. I'm trying to remember because part of it was we were in a different country. So um, when I'm thinking about the U.S. growing up today, and even then local, local news, you should think about this. If you turn to your local station today and you are over 40. Can you remember what your local station, what kind of news they brought to you? Even as, you know, 15 years ago, it was local. And when it came to national news, that was that which came out of Washington or it really, whatever was happening elsewhere, if something was out of Illinois, I'm in Indiana or Kentucky. So if it was um, something was happening in Missouri, there was a local connection. There's a reason why they brought it to us. Uh, I can turn to my local station now, and I have no idea what's going on in the community. Yep. Now there's one local station that will that has a focus on local. Isn't that interesting? They actually segmented as local news. The rest of it is national news, and I, I can remember. Not too long ago, I turned, meaning just a few years ago, um, turned on the local news station and there was horrifying, um, uh, there was a flooding. I live in an area that flooding happens, right? And I'm not, I can't recognize all neighborhoods in the city closest to me. And I remember watching a flooding saying, holy crap, how the, what the heck? I knew we had rain, but who to th what overflowed? How can we help these people? You know, I'm thinking this is local. You know, it's happening somewhere in, in uh, Missouri or Mississippi, someplace. And that was what 10 minutes of the news broadcast was local. That's when I started losing um, faith in my local reporters. It's like, why? What's the, it's not making any sense. We're not a national program. We can get our national news elsewhere, but hey, you know. So it's up to me, isn't it? It's always up to me. It's always up to you to determine what comes in. So having just expressed all of that to you, I can tell you when I touch base with my local news station. It's on purpose it's for about 15 minutes tops. It has to do with the weather. That's pretty much it. And even then, I don't do that every day because I can go online and I can look for a local radar, regional. If I want to know the news, I have multiple news sources I go to online. International news, I don't rely on reporters. In all honesty, I don't trust them anymore, personally. I go to um, the international newspapers, meaning that I don't go to just one source and trust those reporters to tell me what I need to know. I go to um, international newspapers and look for the story. Oh. So I, um, I will value a journalist review or telling of a news story over um, what are called news bloggers, but that's me. So I choose what I'm putting in here and what I'm looking for. So if I got annoyed enough about it, I don't watch it anymore. Right? Because I'm feed what feeds my mind feeds my heart. And I'm trying to grow my heart and I'm trying to grow my mind. So I'm all only interested in that, which is going to solve a problem, give me an answer, help me move forward. So final comments about leadership. All these success principles come into play in order to be a good leader. And honestly, you can become the leader you never intended to be by learning and living these principles. 
I didn't, I didn't learn these with the intention of becoming a leader. That wasn't a goal. The goal was for personal development so that I could grow. So that my business could grow. And in the process, I am becoming a leader and I'm stepping into that role. And I'm watching others do it. And it's awesome. So any final comments from those? Ah, Christopher, what's the most important lesson you learned in today's chapter? Ah, the most important lesson in today's portion. What did I learn today? For me, for me, I learned that it's very similar to what Catherine just said. That yes, to know my strengths as I am right now, to recognize who I am and what I bring to the floor today, right now, in its entirety, good, bad, indifferent, weaknesses, and strengths. Okay? And then be willing be willing to identify those areas that I can improve on and to move forward with those improvements. And honestly, for me, the lesson out of all of that and what I just expressed is to not be afraid of being a leader. I think for me today, that's the important lesson. Different for you, I understand that. For me, expressing aloud a little bit of my thoughts there, I'm recognizing that um, there's no need to be afraid of being a leader because those principles can be learned and can be used to improve yourself to the point of being able to step into that role of leadership and do well. So that would be it. And Christopher is saying, be true to yourself and learn to embrace it. Okay. Anybody else? Ah, Catherine, know your strengths. Oh. That's why I so value my inner circle. They're the ones that have helped me to identify my strengths and my gifts. Get stuck in your own head because you know yourself too well. You can't see it. Very helpful to have caring, successful people um, interested in your success. Help guide you along the way. Very helpful. Hi, Bill. I wanted to welcome Bill Rowe. You snuck in on me. Good to see you here. Excellent question, Christopher. Thanks. Oh, so we are at the top of the hour. I want to thank you. For joining me in the live stream. Thank you for those in the discussion area. Good, good comments. Greatly appreciate those. Thank you who have just been watching and listening. Glad you are with us. And those watching the replay, whew, thanks for hanging with me this long. Appreciate you. Charlene Burke with Grow Because You Know. That's www.growbecauseyouknow.com. Let's move forward with the day on purpose, with purpose, to grow our hearts, grow our minds, and grow our businesses. Until next time, have a great day.